Daytona loses to EPA on farm dust. They're moving ahead to shut it down. Okay, can't have dust. Obama team wants children banned from doing farm chores. You see, this is what's going on under the Department of Labor. Saying that your children can't even carry out the trash or get the eggs out of the chicken coop. This is the total control. This is why they're banning lemonade stands. And Forbes magazine has to ask, why is there a war on lemonade stands all over the United States? It's why they're banning farmers markets and Amish selling milk. And why they're raiding organic food stores that aren't Whole Foods and are mom and pops. Because they want you in their system. They want you at Walmart. They want you at Target. They want you only buying their tainted, GMO, additive-ridden, social engineering garbage. And that's why real liberals, real conservatives, real pro-people, pro-prosperity humans need to be aware of what's going on and to absolutely say no to this agenda because it is a eugenics, anti-human, neo-feudalistic, fascist program that is on record. And only your ignorance, only my ignorance and, and my inaction and your inaction can allow this to continue. Let's go to a few excerpts of where I tried to warn people at the Grand Canyon uh, and more and where we show the actual documents and warn of the UN treaties back in 1997. And then we'll come back on the other side in the radio studio to get David Knight's take on this. Stay with us. We're here at the model United Nations Day, January 16th, 1998. We went in and discussed with a lot of people, a lot of issues, and saw the youth being educated being trained in the ways of world governance and the growth of the world government control apparatus. And I see y'all are wearing little worlds there. Do y'all care about the world? Yeah. Y'all are good people, aren't you? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> y'all think the United Nations is helping? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great, great way to, like, make world peace. A great way to make world peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because through global governance, we can knock out all the, all the troublemakers. Yes. Is that what y'all been talking about? Yeah, like, I sort of. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. I hope y'all have an enjoyable time. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What do you think about the United Nations? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's very good. It's like an organized way. I think it's kind of fun. You know, it is really fun. cool. It decides a whole lot of world issues. Yeah. Like my peace. Yeah. It's like real peace and stuff. It's very it's really exciting. Nifty. <laughs> <laughs> Model United Nations, just one more of the many committees. Helpless young people yielding themselves to the elite's hands. I could tell them about um, the people that really control it, but they never understand it. It's this petty taste of power that gets them to believe that they're really doing something good when they're really working for something bad. I'm standing here in northern Arizona overlooking the beautiful Grand Canyon, one of America's most beautiful treasures. And it's very distressing to me and other patriots and people that truly do care about the environment in America that Bill Clinton, with his executive order, January 19th, 1996, number 12,986, began the precedent to sign over our national treasures to international control. Yes, this is a international biosphere and world heritage site. And guess who controls those? The United Nations. The United Nations is nothing more than a front group for international banks based in Europe and in America. They care nothing about the environment. They care about using it as an excuse to tell you how you can use the environment, to get you used to listening to what they say and what you can do and what you can use. I'm sure you all have all heard they're planning to restrict cars to the Grand Canyon and bring buses in quite soon. Well, I'm here during peak season at the end of the summer and I don't see any problem with Americans coming to the Grand Canyon. They're paying exorbitant prices of $20 a car. Wake up and understand that large corporations think in a long-term game. They understand that if they can restrict use to this place and get international control in here, then 10, 20 years down the road, they can start construction and building, which they're already doing, by the way. So we are for real conservation. But we are against organized crime cliques that call themselves international bankers and elite corporations coming in and buying off your politicians like Bill Clinton, who is an incredible traitor to this country, who then signs over promptly our rights to use and to maintain our natural wonders. There's a 
lot of money in controlling these places. A lot of people come and visit them. Just cut through their lies, and it's sterling simple exactly what's happening. Now let's go talk to some park rangers and other individuals, perhaps some of the tourists here, and see if they've even heard of this terrible crime that's being committed against the American people. This giant land grab. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm conducting a scientific experiment. I want to ask y'all if y'all know about executive order signed January 19th, 1996 by President Bill Clinton, number 12,986, which designated this as a World Heritage Site under UNESCO, a corporation of the United Nations. None of you heard about this in the mainstream media. None of you heard about it. Nobody's heard about this, have you? Well, they, had, they, they, they took down the signs in most parks because there was a furor about three days after they put up the United Nations signs. No one's heard about it, huh? Well, see, that's how fascism breeds. The environmentalist movement is now nothing but an arm of corrupt international banks and corporations. They're using it as an excuse for land grabs all over the entire world. Remember this, and check it out. Executive order. Call the Interior Department. Call Bruce Babbitt. Executive order 12,986. It's important. The modern bureaus of propaganda keep this from you. No sooner had I turned away that some of the crowd began to laugh and call me a kook. I guess they won't take the time to check out the executive order 12,986. I guess they don't believe it unless they hear it from Peter Jennings' mouth. At the Grand Canyon Main Visitor Center, we talked to some of the people at the front desk, and they politely said, yes, we've heard about the U.N., but we're not quite sure what's going on. There was some rigmarole, some protest about the U.N. signs, so they have been moved in some of the national parks. And then later, we got a little visit from the head honchos who were quite rude. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let us take our cameras behind closed doors where I was threatened with arrest. Is there anybody that I can... Who will just tell me the same thing you did, but just where I can have a mic on and things? Well, we have a public affairs officer right here. Well, you heard me just ask him to just politely talk to public affairs officer. We were sitting down for about 10 minutes with our cameras off and barely got a shot of her. That's all we had to freeze it. We only got about a half a second of her. She was very rude and drug me to the back and threatened to arrest me for dare to ask questions. Was I some type of terrorist? And you should have seen the monster they had in the back with us. This is all part of America. It's flat out corruption. You own and control these public lands. Not the federal government and not their international lackey friends controlled by foreign corrupt banks. End of story. We've now reached the north entrance of Yellowstone National Park here in Montana. And let's just read what the important inscription at the front of this old gate reads. For the benefit and the enjoyment of the people created by an act of Congress March 1st 1872. We dropped by the main visitor center and they sent us over to the main administration building. We simply wanted to ask what's going on with the United Nations and our parks. Hey, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Oh, I saw someone look just like you. Uh, we're going all over the country doing an independent film and we're just, we've already talked to Bruce Pavitt's office and we were just wanted to ask questions about the, the uh, biosphere designation. I'll have to, uh, you're filming? Well, do you have a filming permit? Oh, there's a permit? Yes. I'm here making my own documentary. Could you turn off your camera? I just want to reiterate the fact that everyone was very polite at most of the parks, but once you would get to a park and get to the main upper level areas, they were all very rude. They would tell you to turn the camera off. We would. Then they took us to the back and again threatened us uh, with fines for having a camera in the park. And I said, well, I see cameras everywhere. And they said, well, you're a professional, aren't you? And I said, well, not really. I guess I am. And then uh, what kind of weirdos are you? Got me back in the office, called more of them back there. I got threatened to be arrested at two places, and you just saw how polite I was. And then they thought that I had a bug hidden on me or something and wouldn't even hardly talk to me back there. They'd all been advised about dangerous people asking questions. They acted like a military encampment. It was very, very strange. Someone had prepared them. Despite the administration not being very helpful, we did locate the UN signs, both the International Biosphere and the World Heritage Site. Y'all are the owners. I mean, we bought into this whole federal government type deal, and now they're telling us that we can't even use what we supposedly own? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather... Yeah. Turns this over to the United Nations, and they got a plaque down at the main central office. But it'd probably be easier just not to think about it. 
How come they didn't stare you in the conspiracy theory? <laughs> it's not a conspiracy theory. There's a bronze plaque right up there, ma'am. You see that right there? They talk about a Hollywood movie rather than the bronze plaque in the executive order. That is what's wrong with America, ladies and gentlemen. People have been taught, bred from a foot tall, absolutely not to care, while they're being raided by the government, which is controlled by corrupt corporations. And when I say that, I mean the top 20. What people think is rich is a joke in this country. They think a nice house and a nice car is wealthy. And that's why it's so easy for the establishment to manipulate people. You notice the well-informed people would talk to us and, and knew of the executive orders, only a, only a few. And they're probably the people who've actually done well economically because they were able to sift through the lies. But the rest of America seems to love being conned. It's, it's like they get into being lied to and they get an incredible thrill out of the whole thing. That is painful to me. That's why I'll continue to make these documentaries. I will continue to rant and rave on the radio about factual information. And if people don't have the, the, the inner strength to rise up to a threat, foreign or domestic, and stand up for U.S. sovereignty, then I feel really, really sorry for them. Because that's where we are in America today. We are under siege. We're losing our property rights as we speak. All right, and that report is up on YouTube. It's Agenda 21 equals death. Uh, I hope you enjoy that flashback to 1998. That was Alex Jones's first documentary, America Destroyed by Design, 16 years ago. He was talking about Agenda 21 and how they're going to roll this out. This is all about a very, very tiny number of elites controlling everything, going back to a kind of Feudal, feudal system where we're the serfs and they own everything. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the 1%, although it's a much smaller number than the 1%. We're going to be joined in the next hour by Peter Van Buren. He has a book, The Ghosts of Tom Joad, a story of the 99%. It's essentially a reimagining of the Grapes of Wrath, where instead of the Great Depression, the setting is mid-20th century America. Instead of the Dust Bowl, it's the Rust Belt. And instead of the rapid collapse of the Great Depression, it's going to be about the continual decline of America that we see as we fall into this control by the very few. Now, we're also going to talk to him about the re-escalation of Iraq because the other thing about Peter Van Buren was for 23 years, he worked for the State Department. As part of that job, he was in Iraq. He also wrote another book, We Met Well. How we lost the hearts and minds of the people in Iraq. So we're going to talk to him as we see Iraq collapsing back into a revolution. As we see Obama saying that first he's not going to send any troops in. Then it's going to be 300 troops, 500 troops. And now on InfoWars today we have an article saying that it's going to be 800 troops. Although we learned a few days ago from an article by Paul Joseph Watson that Many people in the military have been told that they are training for redeployment to Iraq, that their entire organization is going to be sent over there. So it's going to be much more than 800 troops. This is doubling every couple of days. So we're going to talk to him about Iraq. We're going to talk to him about the ghost of Tom Joad. And, of course, that's a central character in The Grapes of Wrath. I think it was number 12 on the AFI list of top 100 heroes. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. The Genesis Communications Radio Network. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. 